God, we thank you. Thank you for all your goodness. Thank you for your godness. There's some stuff only you can do. Be magnified and glorified in this gathering. We can't do nothing without you. But Lord, with you, we can do all things, whatever you command us to our hands to do. God, first of all, I want you to bind the works of the devil. Sometimes the devil come to church to raise hell. But the book said that we just fix our focus on you. The book said, look unto them here from where come out here. All I have come from the Lord. The text said, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before us, endured the cross, despised with the shame, is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Father. Crush that devil. Crush him. Crush him. Crush his works. In the name of Jesus, fix our thoughts and our minds upon you. We didn't come to worship the devil. We didn't come to worship each other. We came to worship you. Fix our thoughts on you this morning. No matter what's going on, no matter what's going around, may we fix our thoughts on you. Get the glory out of this service. In the name above all names, in the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. Good morning. God is good. Even when we're bad, God is still good. And the book says he worthy to be praised. He worthy because he's God. Amen. Created all things. He's worthy because he's good. Ain't he good? Look beyond our thoughts, supply our needs. He is worthy for his works. Mm -hmm. If you don't even want to know what his work looks like, look in the mirror. Uh, he, he made you, the Bible teaches. He made you in your who womb? Your mother's womb. Amen. And brought you forth and has kept you from that day to this day. Our God is good. Respect to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Respect to the officers of this church. To all of the choir members and musicians to all of you, my father's children. Uh, any visitors in here? Amen. I want to thank you for what you did, amen, for uh, Mother Snow's family yesterday. Y'all did an awesome job. Amen. Everything was good. The family was well pleased. Everybody got full. Amen. And everybody seemed to be joyful when they left. That's how people ought to experience when they come to Bartholomew Missionary Baptist Church. Y'all hear me? So thank you for what you did, for whatever you did, whether it was food or prayers or whatever service. Thank you for what you did. Your labor was not in vain in the Lord. I also want to give honor and respect to my wife, amen, the mother of my cheerings, praise the Lord, uh, and my, my, my sweet thing for 32 years in the name of Jesus. All, I just thank God for her. And happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers. And we thank you for what you have done to make the world a better place by raising your children. Amen. And we just thank God for you. Come to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Book of Ephesians chapter 6. We're looking at verse 2 and 3. Repeat after me, honor, honor. Thy, thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be what? That it may be what? That it may be what? Well with thee. And thou mayest do what? Live long on the earth. For a thought for your mind, remember mom. Say that, remember mom. Remember mama. Remember mama. This world has become all about me, me, me. Is that right? Selfish, self centered, proud, arrogant, cruel. 
Too many people have all become all about me. Me, me, me. But today is Mother's Day. So it's not about you. Unless you're a mother. Amen? But when it's Mother's Day, remember who? Remember Mama. Sometimes when we remember Mama, all we think about who? Ourselves. That's what we think about. And when we do that, we actually do not remember who? Mama. We think about ourselves. Amen. And so remember Mama. That's what we want you to get out of this message today. Remember Mama. Now, this text that Paul penned actually came from the Old Testament. Is that right? It's of the ten what? Ten commandments. And so this is an eternal law. Because the ten commandments are still what? They're still in effect. Is that right? We don't have to kill goats and bulls, but the ten commandments are still in effect. And so honoring your mother is an eternal law from God. Amen. It is the fifth of the Ten Commandments. The first four was all, of, of, all about your direct responsibility to God. Is that right? You shall have no other God what? before me. You shall not make idols for yourself. You shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. And you shall remember the Sabbath day and to keep it what? Holy. Then the fifth commandment moves from God to your parents. Did y'all hear what I said? The fifth commandment, the fourth, the fourth, first four, that was about honoring God, but the fifth was about honoring your parents. And today we want you to remember Mama. Amen. The fifth commandment, amen, this same text that you read in Ephesians is over there in the book of uh, uh, Exodus chapter 20. And Exodus chapter 20 repeats these same words. And so you need to understand that honoring your mother, honoring your father, is an eternal law from God. When you get to heaven, if you are saved and you make it there, you still going to be responsible for honoring your mother and your father. And so don't get twisted in this foolishness on the earth realm where it's all about me. The fifth commandment says, now it's about somebody other than you. Thank God for the people that he used to bring you into the world. And for all mothers, they don't forget to remember mom. When you in your feeling bad because she's not here, don't forget to remember your mama. The text says, honor your mother. So what the text says, it's a big deal to God. And so it ought to be a big deal to you. In the book of this Exodus chapter 21 verse 17 he that curseth his father or mother shall surely be put to death. That's, that's what kind of big deal it is for God. That you would disrespect your mama and your daddy. The Bible says you really were worthy of death. Why? First of all you broke one of the eternal laws of God which is the Ten Commandments and to break the Ten Commandments is your disrespect to God. When you Who he is. 
is and all he has done for you. And when you think about who he is and all he has done, make his name glorious. When you think about what your mother has done for you, how she sacrificed for you. Huh? How she loved you in ways that nobody else could. How she cooked for you. How she cleaned for you. How she was there for you when nobody else was. It ought to make you feel a weight of responsibility for what she showed toward you. And I realized this. Everybody did not have that kind of I'm going to be honest with you. Some of you had a big mama instead. You had a grandmother who was instead of your mother. But when you remember your grandmother, you remember her with the same respect as your mother. You also want to trick you out with something. When you read the law, when you read the Ten Commandments, Brother Pew, it didn't say, honor them if they do good. It says, honor them because they're your parents. Now today, we, we put qualifiers on it. I'm going to do you like you. Huh? Mm, come on now. That's the kind of mindset. And so in other words, we done changed what God expects. And we done made it fit what we want. I'm going to honor you if you do right by me. I'll honor you if you do what I want you to do. I will honor you if you give it now. That's not what the scripture says. It says honor your mother or your father. It didn't qualify whether or not they was good or bad. Give them respect just because God said so. Y'all quiet on me. Remember mama. So the proper way to remember mama is to show her respect. Give her support. Did y'all hear what I said? Give her support. Give her aid and assistance. Right. Ain't that right? Amen. That what's good for one is good for the other. Young folk, now, don't act like you got your body on yourself. Don't act like you was the one that put food on the table. And clothes on the back to pay the light bill and the water bill and the gas bill and, and now you're all educated and grown and you made it yourself. Huh? Don't act like you're the only one, amen, that was doing the homework because when you couldn't learn how, when you didn't know how to spell, they were sitting there sounding the words out with you. They were using their fingers to talk with you. And now you're now all educated and you think you got there by yourself. No, you got there because there was some folk in your life that one of the first folk in your life that was there for you was your mother teaching you when you didn't know how to learn and teaching you how to study. She was there helping you. Don't think you got here by yourself. Your mother needs to bear her burdens. Your mama got burdens. And because she got burdens, you're supposed to help her. You're supposed to make her burdens lighter. That's your responsibility. And the more birthdays they have, the more burdens they're going to have. And you're supposed to make sure that she is taken care of. That's the proper way to remember your mama. That's what this commandment is all about. Giving back to people who have given to you. Ain't that fair? Honor your mother. Why? This is the first commandment for the promise. God has promised to bless you for honoring your mother. How do we know? Because that's what the text said. He said, that it may be well with you. Now some young people and some grown adult children don't understand why they're having so many problems. All they got to do is go back home and see what they didn't do for their own mother. See how they wasn't there for her. They wanted her to be there for them. But when she needed them, they were too busy. They were out with the friends. They didn't have nothing to give. But the funny thing is, she was paying your life bill and couldn't hardly pay her own bill. 
She would put gas in her car, in your car, amen, and, and barely able to put gas in her own car. And so when you needed her, she gave you what she couldn't afford to help you live your life. Now she's in a position where she's struggling. How will you repay her? It's your responsibility to honor your mother. It's your responsibility as a Christian to honor her. She was there for you. You be there for her. Let me tell you what the devil will do. The devil will tell you, you ain't got to do that. She grown too. You grown. You got your life. Uh, that don't change what the word what? Said. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. I don't care if she is grown, amen, and, and she got a house and you got your house. You're supposed to keep yourself in a position to be able to do for your mother. And you say, I can, this is my money. I can do what I want with it. Well, let's go back and really look again to see how she was making ways for yourself. She made bills to help you pay your bills. Sometimes we'll go out and take a loan out to help you get a car. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. She put herself on the street trying to keep your roof over your head. Remember your mama. Why? The text said that you may have a good life. That ain't what the devil will tell you. The devil will tell you you can have a good life, you got some money, you got an education. Huh? You got your car. Hello? You got your house. This text says that part of your life is dependent upon how you treat, respect, and respond to the needs of your parents. That's what this text says. So you might grow up to be rich. Amen. And have a lot of money, have a lot of notoriety. But I need you to understand, you got to trust me that. God's still going to hold you accountable for what this text says. And if you live your life and you had a good name, and you had a good job, you had good money, and you disregarded and disrespected your mama, I don't know how you think you're going to get any lower. You violated the eternal law of God. How can you say you love the Lord and then disrespect your mama? How can you say you love the Lord and did what not there when your mama needed you? How can you say that you love God and saw your mama suffer and didn't do nothing to help her? Wait until it was time to pull the plug to see what you can get out of her life. Huh? Fussing over the little stuff she had left, but while she was living, didn't couldn't make time to take her to the doctor when she would get off of work and stay off of work to look after you but when she needed you. I'm too busy. I can't get off of my job. Remember your mama. How can I re remember her? Red, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Love her unconditionally. The same way that she loved you. Mama would look past what you was and see what you could be. Some kind of way when they got a little older, she get on my nerves. I said what I said. Huh? But it was okay for you to get on her nerve. Hello? Love her unconditionally the same way that she loved you. Amen. Another thing you can do, hug that woman. Amen. Make her feel your love. Make her know that she is love. Take your arms and hug her. The same way that she hugged you. When you skipped your little knee, she kissed your forehead and all of a sudden you were better. Huh? You remember the day? She said, you're going to be all right. And you, as soon as she kissed you, right back out there running again. Hug your mother. Make her know that she is loved. Next thing I want you to do. 
do is understand her sympathetically. Understand her sympathetically. The Bible said, all you're getting get understand it. My mama is 76 years old. She's stubborn. I said what I said. No, she's stubborn. I, I, I tell her, I tell her myself. I told her yesterday, as a matter of fact. Amen. She has gone through changes. Dad is no longer here. Little brother's gone. Me and her is all that's left. She still works a full time job at 76 years old. And does it without complaining. And shows up an hour before it's time to start working. I understand that. She's not ready to sit down. She ain't ready for God help her to get ready. <laughs> Hello? And that's what I told her yesterday. And I still get on her nerves. I'm 56 years old. I still get on her nerves. I do. Amen. And uh, I understand. She cares about me. I was down in her house yesterday cutting the field that we on down from her house and she got the little puppy and strolled down there to see what I was doing. And she said, you're supposed to be at home resting. That's what she told me. Amen. And uh, she knows that uh, your pastor has got a job. Amen. And so she wants the boy to be rested when he get up and go to work on Monday morning. I said, but mama, this grass ain't going to rest. Uh, it is my job to cut this grass. Dad gone, brother gone. I'm the one that's left. And this grass going to get cut in the name of Jesus. And then I'm going to go home and rest. Huh? I understand your mother sympathetically. That, now, I'm going to be honest with you now. As we age, <laughs> sometimes, amen, I temper that as long as. Yeah, hello. Hello, son. Uh, we, we get a little upset, can I get a window? But guess what? Understand one another sympathetically. Look, when somebody done got AIDS and their bones is hurting, amen. You, some of you ain't even know your bone get hurt, and you got an attitude. Why do you think your mama carried you in her womb, amen? And you got brothers and sisters she carried them in her womb, and she ought to be tired and so cranky sometimes. And you guess what? You need to have some understanding about. It. You ain't carrying the heart of nobody if you get cranky. Understand her sympathetically. Here, here you go why you should because when you got that little bad note from school, huh? And you said little Johnny hit you first. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. And, 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 and she understood what? Sympathetic. Huh? And if the teacher was mean to you, amen, and she was willing to go take on the teacher for, on your behalf. Am I right about it? Huh? Uh, 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 the same way that you want folk to understand you, learn how to understand somebody else. The, the, the next thing I want you to do, listen attentively. Listen to your mother. Listen to your mother. Listen to the wisdom that she's feeding you. Listen to the understanding that she has. Listen to, listen to the knowledge that she's teaching you. She's trying to help you out. She's trying to help you up. She's trying to keep you from falling in some of the same pitfalls that she fell in. She's trying to keep you from going through some of the same struggles and trials that she went through. Listen to your mother. His wife. Because she's been listening to you ever since you was in her bed. She would listen to your goo goo and ga ga and coo coo and all that stuff. She would listen to your terrible tunes. She would listen to you when you was a troubled teenager. She would listen to you when you brought old Rodrigo to the house and she told you he wasn't no kind. And you were like, Mama, you just don't understand the way he loved me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she understood because she had her own black a long time ago. Hello, somebody. Listen to your mother. Listen to their fears. Listen to their heart. And see, what was funny. Your mama, amen, looked like she was so strong when she was young. 
But when she get older, she gonna watch her step because she know she's not as young as what she, and sometimes she might be a little slow, but listen to her situation, listen to her, and find yourself being impatient with her if she wanted her to be with you. Listen to your mother. Next one I want to say to you. Help her cheerfully. Be glad to be there for your mama. Because the day going to come when you wish you could lay eyes on her one more time. Help her cheerfully. Because some of them grades you got were science project that she did. <laughs> Hello, somebody. And if you live long, if you live long enough, some of them dresses you wore. It's what she saw. She got them flowers sack. Y'all didn't want to talk to me. Huh? And she, she, she got that needle and thread and she made you look good, made you look presentable, made you feel like you were somebody. Even if that dress wasn't hanging down from your bigger sister, y'all ain't gonna say that. She knew how to take it up and make it fit you just right. Huh? Hello? To help your mother cheerfully. She's been your biggest cheerleader all your life. Now that she's of age, you be her biggest cheerleader. You show up and you do what you got to do. Why? Because she showed up and did what she had to do for you. Even when your daddy didn't have sense enough to know what to do. She showed up. She showed up when nobody else would. She went to the school. She went to the doctor with you. She went to your awards, baby. She was back. This next one is for you all whose mother is no longer here. Remember her gratefully. If your mom is no longer here, remember her gratefully. And that's where we're kind of failing in this time. Too many of us start thinking about mama, and the first person we start thinking about after the end is myself. And we lose sight of her. You ought to be glad to tell people what kind of mama you had. You ought to be glad to tell your children and grandchildren about your mama. And guess what? We know ain't nobody no 100% angel. Mm -hmm. You hear me? But see, when people tell your story, what part you want them to tell? Mm -hmm. The same part that you want them to tell on you is what you tell on your mother. Mm -hmm. You make her look good. And when I say make her look good, I ain't say lie. Now I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm saying speak well of her. Find something good to talk about. To instill in your children and your grandchildren the same way they did for you. Remember her gratefully. Sometimes you need to sit down and get your pen and, and write down all the stuff that she meant to you and how she went to work sick to put food on your table and when your daddy ran off, she stood and stayed and did the best she could with what she had. Sometimes you need to write it down on paper to understand how blessed you were. Remember her gratefully. The best way to remember her is to live a life that reflects the good that 
that you saw in her. My mama is a giver. God knows she has blessed me and my family in all kinds of ways. My mama is a mama to her siblings. She's the oldest child and they call her mama. And that didn't start in her old age. Y'all know back in the day, Papa out somewhere working, Mama had stuff to do. And there was one at the house that was responsible for everybody else. That was my mama. She was responsible for cooking. She was responsible for keeping folk in line by her example. And today they honor her as their mama. Why? Because they are thankful to God for the mother's spirit that's in her. Live a life that show appreciation to your mother. I've seen some mothers at death door who did not want to die. She didn't want to die because she was concerned about the way her children were living. She wanted to see them saved. She wanted them to hear their testimony of Jesus Christ before she closed her eyes and took her last. I've seen some mother who did not want to die. They was fighting against God on the bed of a prison, not ready to go because, Lord, my child, my children, that my child live a life that shows your mama that you thank God for her. And the best way you can do that is give your life to Christ. I'm going to teach you how powerful this lesson is. All you have to do is go to Calvary. And when you go to Calvary, you'll see Jesus dying on the cross and you will see him fulfilling this verse. Go to Calvary. See Jesus pray, which is God's will, right? Father, what? Forgive them, they know not what they do. And the second thing he said, woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Jesus fulfilled this verse. What that ought to mean to you if Jesus would give honor and respect to his mama on his dying bed, what should I do while I'm living? I ought to live a life that make folk thank God for my mama because she's the one that raised me. She's the one that prayed for me. She's the one that lived up an example for me. She's the one that whipped me. She's the one that taught me. She's the one that was there for me like nobody else. My mama was there for me more than my dad was. I am the man that I am today. In large part, one, because of God. And two, because of my mama. And three, because of my wife. I had the tag team that were praying for me, Sister Q. When I was living like a devil and happened to do it. One was my mama, and one was my wife. And without them, ain't no telling where I would be. But because of them, I'm standing here before you. Jesus honored that verse in more than one way. He not only made preparation for to live on earth, but of you. He died to make preparation for a living glory. He died for her to live in glory. I hope that's where your mama is. I hope that's where your mama's going. And I pray that's where you want to be. Remember 
for your tomorrow. Remember the lessons she taught you. Remember the blessings she gave you. And take the good that you saw in her life and make it a part of yours. And if your mama wasn't there for you, think of what you can do for her. Father, I forgive her. I put all my pain and my frustration in your hands. And today I leave this place with no more grudge against my mama who wasn't there for me. Then you don't have to try to figure out why. Because some of that stuff we will never know. All we know was she wasn't there. But guess what God did? He gave me another mom. Sometimes it was auntie. Huh? Sometimes it was granny. And sometimes it was foster home. Sometimes it was a teacher at school that took you under her wing. Sometimes it was a Sunday school teacher at the church that took you under her wing and talked to stuff that you wish your mother would have did. Guess what? That person that did that in, in effect, that was your mother. Thank God for them. Now I'm going to tell you something different, something else. My daddy did as he grew. My big mama was long gone. Dad died for another woman. That's mama. Around that lived around the road from us. Every holiday he would bring her a gift. Christmas, her birthday, he gave her respect as a mother. If your mother's no longer here, there's nothing to stop you from getting a mentor mother and honoring them and continue the legacy that your mother had already instilled in you. Find you somebody else to love on. Find you somebody else to talk to. Find you somebody else, amen, to show gratitude and grace to. Huh? Maybe your mother-in-law, maybe your auntie, maybe, maybe somebody, amen, that you work on the job with that's a mother thing on your job. Find somebody to bless and so good into. The same way your mother sold into you. Jesus Christ died on that cross. Not just for your mama. He died for you. On the third day, he got out that grave. He said, all authority in heaven and earth is in my hand. Think a lot about Jesus Christ. When I listen to David in Psalm 27, David put it this way, even if my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Do y'all hear me? He'll be a mother to the motherless, a father to the father, a friend to the friend. Whatever you need, God said, I am. Come up to me. I don't need to live in heaven. He said, I will give you rest. Anybody that's going to praise him for his goodness, I thank God for it. Because of his goodness, I got a mama. Because of his goodness, I got a child. Because of his goodness, I got a wife. I'm thankful for all God's blessing in my life. The main thing I got is a saved soul. When I close my eyes and take my last breath, don't worry about what I read. To be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Already. Are you saved? Yes. If you're not saved, today is the day of salvation. Amen. Amen. The book says, today you hear my voice. Heart not your heart. Are you saved? Everybody stand. Whatever you want to take this on today. Let us pray. God, one of the greatest gifts that you ever gave us is a loving mom. One that loved us unconditionally. One that hugged us affectionately. One that understood us sympathetically. One that listened to us attentively. One that helped us cheerfully. When I think about my mama, that's what I receive. But the other thing she did, she did with me. And I'm glad for it. But when you called me to preach, one of the first things I had to go back home and do 
is confessed to my mama and my dad that I, I wasn't always the son that they thought I was. I had to confess sin to them that I stole money from them. And I had to thank them for whooping me and disciplining me and teaching me to work and teaching me how to be an upright man. I had to thank them for that. Because you gave them to me to do all of those things. And I appreciate it. I am so God that if we celebrate this day, it's supposed to be a celebration. But we have made it about us. We don't matter about what we lost. Which means we're taking the focus off of the people we're supposed to be honoring. We're supposed to be celebrating them and all the good they brought in our life. Help us to keep the main thing the main thing. The Bible said, remember those folk who came before us and spoke the word to us. We're supposed to remember them fondly. We're supposed to remember them greatly. Why? In gratitude because you're the one that put them in our life. Not the young folk that know Father God. You can't hardly make it without a mom and dad, and you sure can't make a good life by disrespecting the folk that you put in our life. Help us all to get a grip and realize we here one for another. And the same way there was there for us when we were little, couldn't do for ourselves, and the same way we're supposed to be there for them. Then I got old. Can't do for themselves. Help us to get it together, Lord. That we might honor you. Because if we honor our loving Father, it's the same as honoring you. Because when we obey that word, we're showing you our love for you. We're showing them our love for them. Thank you for my mom. Thank you for our moms. As we leave this place, bless us. Let us have a wonderful day in you, a wonderful day remembering our mamas, a wonderful, a wonderful day celebrating those who still have mamas, a wonderful day celebrating our wives who are mothers, celebrating our aunts and, 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 and cousins who are mothers, celebrating all the people that bear the burden of children and love them and labor for them. God, we close this service. Take us from this place. Help us get to our very destination, safe and sound, to have a, a, a wonderful day. Keep us to be to be together. Let it be a good time that we be coming to the glory of our praise. In the name of above all names, the name of Jesus Christ, all of you said, Amen. God bless you. God keep you.